Welcome to Paternoster. If you ever want to visit the quaintest village, fishing village that is, uh, just north of Cape Town, about two hours drive north, come to Paternoster. This is part three of the three-part series. The first two were more on wildflowers. And this is of Paternoster, the little town that we stayed in uh, during our paint outs uh, at the Cape Columbine Reserve as you can see in my past two videos. So this was an early morning walk on the beach. Uh, absolutely cute, cute little village with the most wonderful cottages. So really built in a way like the old English or Irish style uh, cottages. And this was our very first day that we'd arrived and we sat down on this lovely little old um, walkway on the way to the beach and did some sketching of course dying to get going on the very first day and uh, these flowers that you see us painting over here or the cottage in front of uh, the flowers in front of the cottage they you can see they're quite closed now and this was late afternoon and they open up only when the sun shines but with early morning walks I saw some wonderful reflections so I'm going to be doing a demonstration of seagulls on the beach which I did at home in my studio I must admit but a massive inspiration from um, what I saw in Paternoster so I am using a moleskin sketchbook it's about 200 gram and mixing colors of uh, indigo, ultramarine, uh, a bit of yellow ochre and at the end some burnt sienna. So these are mainly the colors I'm going to be using, maybe a little bit of Payne's Gray at the end, but these are the basic colors that I'm going to be using for this sketch. So I'm using my Da Vinci mop brush just to wet the page, you know that it holds a huge amount of water because of the natural fibers and uh, as you can see it is extremely wet and I've painted around the birds so I'm not using any masking fluid but because I've wet just around the birds the paint is not going to flow in where it's dry so I'm trying to keep that white as in the white of the paper I also don't want to paint from uh, one side of the page exactly to the other, well should I say from corner to corner, top to bottom. I like to leave a little bit of an edge around and in a way it then frames the painting. So the sort of grey colour that you see at the bottom is the mixture of yellow ochre with the blue and then a touch of burnt sienna. It's a lovely like a warm, warm grey colour. And I've made a slightly more um, watery mixture there and slightly darker so when this first layer was dry and of course you've got to remember to keep it to let it go dry I used my hair dryer but if you've got a nice sunny day you can use that and then come in with slightly darker layers but you know because these were reflections um, in the sand so you want to try and keep that sort of look so it takes a, a few layers if you like. This is not something you can really do in one go uh, because that first layer gives the depth to the painting. So just building up slowly with darker sections and don't worry right now that it all looks very straight in the water. So we will be coming in with uh, different techniques. By splattering of course, uh, make sure your brush is pretty well loaded with water and paint but not too dark because, oh well, look it's always going to dry lighter but don't make the paint too dark. And a bit of blue at the bottom just to balance the colour once again so that you don't just have one colour at the top and the other, other at the bottom.
starting with some Payne's Gray. So these are the um, kelp gulls that we get up on the coast and obviously preserving my whites and keep coming in with some, some gray. Um, I must say the seascape is, just gives me a lot of reminder of uh, the work that I normally do on the ships and uh, unfortunately it's all been cancelled right now because I work as resident artist on board expedition ships. They are passenger ships but take a very small amount of people and they travel to far-flung places like uh, Antarctica, the Arctic, uh, mainly for wildlife, conservation, learning things on board with um, ornithologists, historians, geologists, and of course an artist. Um, and uh, so it's just been really unfortunate that everything's been cancelled during this pandemic. And uh, I really do miss it a lot. But I've learned a lot with this doing the YouTube. So I hope you guys have enjoyed um, this channel so far. And of course, once I return to the ships, uh, it will I will try and do as much as I can. But uh, then it is a full-time job working and um, I might not have as much time as I have now. But I have thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. Here on the shadow areas of the seagulls, uh, I've added just a touch of alizarin to my grayish mixture. Just to add some shadow. And if the lines look too straight, some of them you might want a, a very hard line just because of the um, reflection. But you can see I'm softening it a bit here and there. And that you would do with a clean brush that's dabbed uh, in a paper towel and you just run it along the edge and it just breaks that, that hard line and softens things up a bit. Not forgetting the beaks, a mixture of uh, lemon yellow and cadmium yellow and now coming in with a bit of white gouache so this is in a way where it all comes together so now we want to try and get rid of these like really straight lines that are in the background on the water so this is the idea of the uh, little bit of a break in the waves as they come down towards the beach. The, the gouache I have is uh, comes from a tube and I mix it with a bit of the blue so that it's not this pure pure white but gouache also dries lighter so sometimes you might have to come in with another layer just if it's not if you feel it's not dark enough So this nice bit of grey and uh, just to soften the edges over here I'm mixing the gouache with some of my leftover paint just to soften all these lines and make a more gradual um, well a graduation from the dark coming towards the beach. I've never really been one to buy all different colors of gouache. I only use the white, um, but I'd probably like to experiment a bit more with that. It is a water-based medium and it can be a lot of fun. I have seen a lot of other artists do some absolutely wonderful work with gouache and I wouldn't mind trying it out every now and again. Just defining the legs, you can see the way I hold the pencil in the real left-handed way, gripping a little bit too tight. I'm trying to not get onto the wet uh, splatters that I've just splattered there in, in, in white, the gouache. But um, as you can see, it's still, I have got um, a thick fleece that I'm wearing. It's still a little bit chilly here in Cape Town. It is spring and we've had some wonderful days but also some really cold chilly days and as this was done in the studio there's uh, uh, definitely a little bit colder. So my Jelly Roll Gel White Pen for a bit of detail I've added something to the legs at the bottom here and the webbed feet 
and then uh, just uh, a highlight in the eye but also not too strong because you don't want it to stand out like like a sore thumb so I have added that and this is the final result without the writing I then came in with writing later on and the most gorgeous little place as you can see we sat here having a beer which was wonderful after a long day's painting and did a quick sketch this is my Hannah Merler brown paper uh, sketchbook but the paper is pretty thin I you have to basically use gouache with your colors here because otherwise it doesn't stand out at all but I like it because of it stands out so well against the brown paper but it is mainly a fishing village so we were uh, super lucky to see these fishermen bring in their, their catch they'd already delivered some of it and put it in their little pickup truck and here they were sorting out the nets and it's just an absolute stunning sight to see and uh, on our last day as the sun was going down we had a lovely meal outside on the veranda and um, this is something I would love to do again very soon come back to this wonderful little fishing town of Paternoster and I hope if you come to South Africa one day you will visit it too